Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is for you, I'm Cycle. It's time for more Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. You can see I have two roads showing up here right now in the menu. I've looked up the Port Road and West of Scotland Lines, the Port Road, aka Western Lines of Scotland. Two routes that we have available for consideration here today, uh, out of the many that are on my li in my library here. And the one I'm trying to look up today is the Port Road. Now, if I go to West of Scotland Lines, you're going to see there's no problem. Lots of scenarios show up. In fact, I think about 15 come with the route, some of which are similar. For example, Ice Cream Man is a three-part scenario in the Black Five uh, the with the intermediate weathering with the snowplow. So that is uh, one of the ones on West of Scotland Lines or Western Lines of Scotland. I love the uh, wordplay, Oil See You Later. Uh, and a number of heavy weathering Black Five scenarios like Milk and Cookies, which I think I saw someone else playing and he really enjoyed it. So I look forward to playing that one myself at some point. Uh, but that's not the route we want to look at today. The route we want to look at today is the original Port Road. Let me explain. The original Port Road was uh, and was and is a route that is part of the Western Lines of Scotland, which why would I want to play it by itself? Well, because this is where I'm a railroad, I'm a railroad archaeologist. Come on, guys. I'm going to dig up this stuff. Just work with me here. So Port Road includes 15 miles of the line between, I believe it's Dumfries and Castle Douglas. It also includes two miles of the line, which actually connects to Dumfries. So I think, don't think it's actually Dumfries itself on the 15 miles of the line. But there's a two mile connection to the line from Dumfries. So the line goes from Dumfries to Castle Douglas is what I should be trying to say here. And that was version one. This is the winning entry in the 2009 uh, Railworks route design contest where people had to design a route in a week. Uh, Keith Ross put out this gem, literal gem, with 17 miles of track and a couple scenarios included with it. Problem is, we're not gonna see those scenarios. Let's take a look here. Where are they? What's wrong here? Where's, there's nothing here. If I go to workshop, it's clear that there's not workshop scenarios, there's none to show. If I go to official scenarios, well, again, there's nothing there, but it doesn't say there's none to show. So they should be here. Where are they? Let's go to the build menu. So here's the answer to our question as to where the scenarios are. The two scenarios are called Evening Stopper and Ice Cream Man, both set in 1965. Now. You might be asking, why are they showing up in this menu and not in the main menu? This is due to a problem with how the menu works in uh, Train Simulator 20XX compared to, and Classic, compared to how it worked in the original Rail Simulator. I believe when this route was created, the game was originally called Rail Simulator. Now, of course, it worked in Rail Works as well, but the problem is that the scenarios were created in a format where they... We're in a rail simulator format. So the scenario file still has all the information if you look in the scenario folder. But if you look at the scenario properties file, you're gonna find that all it lists is a whole bunch of languages, way more than the original, that the current game has, way more. You had Turkish, you had uh, Chinese, you had Swahili, you had everything in there pretty much. I'm, I might make up Swahili, I don't know. But you have all sorts of languages, languages in there that uh, are not in the current file. The current file only has English, French, German, Spanish, uh, Dutch, which I really see used. Um, I'm forgetting one under Dutch, and then Russian, Polish, and then Russian, and then it says other. And if some other languages are added, you might see like Chinese languages in there or some other things like that under there once in a while. But uh, generally, those are the seven that are used. And uh, I should say eight because the English has to count as one of them English, French, German, Spanish. No, I guess it is seven. Okay. Maybe it is seven. I'm sure I'm forgetting one. I have to be forgetting one. Italian. I'm missing Italian. So yeah, it is eight. Uh, but in any case, these two scenarios are in the old rail simulator format. And I've noticed this is the case with some other Keith Ross scenarios as well. For example, he has six scenarios for uh, West, West Coast Mainline North down here at the bottom of the screen right now. But unfortunately, uh, I'm not playing those today. We'll look at those later. Those are six scenarios I want to actually look at and do some changes to because there's some stock in them that we don't use anymore. But, uh, so we'll look at those at a later time. But right now, I want to look at this gem of a route. The only way we can do this is to convert these two scenarios to use the proper format. Now, we can go into the workshop and just play them from there. But let's just go in. Let's just resave them to the menu. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, fix that right now because uh, it'll be nice to have that fixed. Unfortunately, when I get to version 2 and version 3 of the route, I'm going to have to do the exact same thing. There are way more scenarios with version 2 and even more with version 3. But the good news is that all the scenarios from the older versions do get moved up to the newer versions as well. So the six scenarios that come with version two, I believe it is, they're all included in version three. So don't worry about that. We're going to see them all. Uh, we're we're going to see newer scenarios as we get to each route, each version of the route. 
right now for this session for this Saturday this Friday Saturday session I'm only gonna do evening stopper and ice cream man then we're gonna move on to another route for right now so this is just my quick look at the Fort Road we're gonna move on further on this route at a later time because I do have some other things I want to do that are going to I'm gonna see if I can start something else on Tuesday uh, I haven't decided what it's going to be yet, but I wanted to get this quick look at this route in, and I think this is a good time to get the first one of them done. So let's get looking at the scenarios that we have to do to edit them. You might know this process already, but we'll take a quick look. So here we are in the scenario editor. Let's go ahead and pop out here, and I'm just going to pick something random off the side menu. Let's plant a vehicle digger. Ooh, maybe not. That's a big item. Let's plant some birds circling. Where? Sure, I planted some birds circling, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna undo that. We're not gonna undo that, okay. Um, well, not exactly how I want to do that, but uh, let's just get rid of that. Now we'll undo it, there it goes. So now the birds circling have been removed. I can now hit F2, I can go ahead and save the scenario. What this will do is this will save the proper train simulator format, the train sim classic format, into the scenario editing file. So now when I go to the scenario properties file, that's what I meant to say the scenario properties file. It will show the proper information and it should show on the main menu. We'll check that in a second. I've got a second scenario to edit first. So I'll see you back at the menu. So it took me two tries, but there it is in the menu. You can see that both scenarios are now showing up. So they are still in the original folders. I have not done anything with the folders. They're in the original folders. And now when I go to look at the information on these scenarios, I can look up that information. So if I want to give you a list of all the trains in the scenario and the times they started, I can go to the scenario file, grab the times, combine them with the trains that are being driven by each of the AI, and I give you a full list of everything going on in this scenario. I'm not gonna do that though. I'm just gonna go ahead and play the first one. So the one we're gonna play tonight is Evening Stopper, and I'll tell you about the situation which I'm recording this as I'm going, so you're gonna see what may not be a perfect run here. We are gonna be driving a Rusty Black 5. That's what we're doing today. We have for the next scenario on Saturday, a class 37. And like I said, I'll talk about the situation I'm in right now as I play this because I'm literally playing this in a situation where I feel like I'm behind when I'm actually not but by the time I'm able to come back to the computer I will be so I uh, will talk about that as we go anyway first scenario of two to get a preview of the port road here we are on the uh, 40 is this really 30 minutes uh, I'm not sure which one is actually 30 and 40 minutes right now but you know what I still want to do the black five first anyway so let's go ahead and do the black five evening stopper it is let's get going no message as usual, so uh, bringing up the wrong HUD, uh, bringing up the F1 task, we have to pick up passengers from Dumfries. We're at Dumfries. I've already gone ahead and opened the doors here at Dumfries. So as we come back here, you will see the doors are indeed open. So we, passengers are able to board, they're able to hop on, and uh, oh, can't really, oh, I'm going through some passengers. Well, there you go. They're, they're there. Just trust me, they're there. So we're going to go ahead and get the train, get ourselves ready for departure. We're already ready for departure. So please proceed when you get clearance, contact signal box if necessary. This would be a Keith Ross thing, obviously, because uh, he does not know if the game is going to have the signal box clear. I'm just hoping the scenario still works right now. That's all I'm worried about. So let's make sure we get... Oh, the brakes are still releasing. So we're going to get a little power once the brakes come off. We are not clear yet because there's a train coming right now that is going to get precedence over us. You can see it coming right ahead of us here. That service is the Kirkcud Bright to Dumfries service. So yeah, we're not gonna contact the signalman because uh, right now he's gonna say you're an idiot. So we're gonna proceed once this signal does clear for us, which should be any moment. Now we're clear to pass. So yeah, it looks like the signal is not gonna change, but we are now clear to go. So the line we were on is now available. So we are leaving at a speed limit of 30 miles per hour with permission to pass this red signal. You can see that we are gonna be making stops at all of the platforms today. So we started at Dumfries. We're gonna continue all the way to Dalbini, which is the entire route. The entire Port Road route. So once I verify the next signal is indeed a clear signal, that by the way is the Glasgow to Carlisle service. It looks like a class 37 or something like that. I'm not sure. 
let's get our steam situation our usage a little more accurate here there we go so let's take a quick look at the scenario layout as soon as I verify that our next signal is green and we're also entering a 40 mile per hour speed restriction which is soon going to become a 60 mile per hour speed limit Why not blow the horn? Let's get a little speed going up quicker. This is not a timetable scenario. We have all the time on Earth. As you see, our signal is green. So I'm going to go ahead and just get ourselves up to a decent speed for now. Oh, this is still not bad for 2009. I, I tell you. This was made in 2009. It, this is the actual contest version of the route for the uh, route building contest. Even now, this actually still looks pretty good. This was good then, it's even better now in Western Lines of Scotland. Even if it is dated, it's still pretty darn good. So I'm gonna let the speed, I got on the gas a little quickly there, but you know what, we're legal now anyway. So quick look at the map as we come up to our next stop. We started back here at Dumfries, which you can see comes off the uh, main line. We're gonna continue all to Max, Maxwell Town next. We're gonna continue down to Lokenhead. Kelly Wan, Kirk Gunson, I hope I'm saying these right, Southwick, and ending at Dalbeedy, which the route, route continues eventually beyond that, but we're not worried about that today. Let's go ahead and get ourselves ready to slow down here. In fact, I'm going to look at how far away I am and say this is probably a good idea to slow down now. So that we do not blow past this platform in any illegal fashion. I may need to really assemble. Oh, they even had the cars up there then. Not bad. I wanted this gone. I don't know why that's still there. So we're going to go ahead and keep those brakes coming on because we are not going to slow down in time if we don't. That may do the job. It may not. That might do the job. More brakes. Well, the engine's going to go past a little bit, but that's okay. I'm just uh, taking a little bit of the brakes off, probably in a way that I should not be doing so right now. I want those doors open. The doors are now open. Arrival at Maxwell Town Station Platform 2. Book departure is 1806. I'll just hang around here for a moment then. Okay, let's go. Leaving Maxwell Town Station. Our next platform is Lockenhead. And if I do say any of these names wrong, by the way, I do apologize. I am not um, either English or Scottish. Especially not Scottish, and uh, I do not uh, enjoy a round of haggis, I say. Uh, we sell for poutine here instead, which is a completely different food product. Uh, so, yeah, apologies if I get any of the names wrong. That's the basic gist of it. And if we can go up to 60 miles per hour again, we are going to be about three and a half miles, well, almost four miles actually, away from Lock and Head, so we have a little time to get this thing going. So I mentioned at the start of this that I'm doing this in a bit of a uh, somewhat rushed format here. By the time you see this, the Ontario election and the Ontario Canada election will be completed. I'm working the election and I'm recording this the night before the election, which is probably not a good idea since I have to be up at seven o'clock in the morning following recording this. Uh, and it is past midnight. So yeah, I'm doing something stupid right now, playing this for you, but I also want to get this video out on Friday if possible. And uh, I'm probably going to uh, try to rush edit this video immediately after I play it. So the second story I'm not going to be playing until Friday myself. And then you'll be seeing that video on Saturday. 
my goal then is to try to get some other content recorded with the Friday video, with the Friday recording of the Saturday video. Try and get some additional content recorded for the next thing I want to do. What it is I'm going to do after that, I'm not decided yet. But I am leaning towards doing something German because I haven't been to Germany for a while. Uh, I'm also looking. Actually, I, I was actually I take that back. America's the one I have not been to for a while. But I have not been to um, back to a certain route where I have a lot of content in a while, and that's something I want to look at. There's also an extension to that route, which I also am considering looking at. So I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do yet. I might go back to Germany. I may uh, try to head over to Stevens Pass in America, which I did try on two occasions to record. And uh, the first one, it didn't record my voice. The second one was lost in a uh, series of uh, problems that I like to refer to as hard luck. And uh, that's really what I leave those down to. And the scenarios in question are such long scenarios that I just have not been inclined to re-record those again. I will come back to them, though, and we will play those scenarios at some point. Stevens Pass is a beautiful American route. I want to get that shown. I also have some workshop routes like Adriana County and uh, Bedford Branch, things like that that I want to play as well. So we are going to try and get some American content, too. But I do want to go back to Germany to see if we can get another route in there for that or some content on another route I've already played. I do have some options for that. So our speed limit is now 50 miles per hour. I'm covering around 46.3 right now. Again, because we don't have an actual timetable, I honestly don't care how we do. Uh, we're going to be given our book departure times. If we're late, we're late. Steam, in Steam days, it was not common to expect a train to stick perfectly to a timetable. So even though there is a booked timetable for each train, uh, Things can happen with steam trains, and you may not ever make that timetable. So it's possible trains could be late. Even in uh, in this scenario, there's even a train which is known to have been late on occasion, being a sleeper service. It's been known the train has been late on occasion uh, because it is that one time a week train. Uh, the Northern Irishman will show up at some point as we drive along here, and that train is one that would leave on Sunday night from Houston and would make its way to Stranraer by the morning to connect to another train going to the harbor. And uh, I saw a story from someone who said that uh, the train, the Northern Irishman itself, was sometimes late for its connection to the Stranmore Harbor. Oh, my. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Get a shot of... Oh, too late. But that's what you call a viaduct right there, ladies and gentlemen. That is beautiful. And back into the cab, or at least heading stick, head stuck out the window. Just a reminder, this is what the train looks like inside. You can see the firebox and everything. I have an automatic fireman, so he's doing the work for me. We're going to poke our head outside as I manipulate the controls on my own. A bus over there. Look at that. Can't see him now. But he's over there. And there's a view on the other side. Let's take the regulator off because I know I'm going to be coming to a station momentarily. So the 60 doesn't mean anything right now. I'm just going to go ahead and coast a little bit for right now because that's perfectly fine. Though we are on uphill segments, so not surprisingly, we probably don't want to coast too much. But we are down to 40 miles per hour. We're 7 tenths of a mile away from the uh, station at Lockenhead. And uh, that is a Castle Douglas to Dumfries service. So let's give him a little honk. He's uh, rude and doesn't reply. Thank you. I'm used to that. Can we get a little more regulator on because I'm losing a bit more speed than I want to this far out? I probably will be going 20 or 15 by the time I get to the platform, but I want to at least come in with some speed so I have to hit the brakes. A little bit more of a challenge that way, you see? I'm going to take the regulator off back to a neutral position. Because at this point, we are going to have to brake, which is exactly what I want to do. There's a nice big bus up there. Upper left as it went by. So we're going to put some brakes on now. I actually just realized I had not have a running brake, so this could actually be a bad thing that I decided to do this. This could be a very bad thing. Okay, a little 
little more brakes now that I'm in the station. Uh, train, you can stop, please. Okay, practice my time for the stops. That's what I'm going to have to do here on this route. In any case, we have arrived at Lock and Head Platform 1. So I got a message while I was uh, trying to set up my camera angle. We're actually good to go already for our uh, departure. I don't know what happened there, but it's happened on another route as well where I pause the game. I go to set up my camera view, and then I unpause. I start my camera view, and all of a sudden, I'm free to go after two seconds of waiting. So I'm not sure what causes that, but uh, we are being told that it's all downhill from here, and... Uh, I don't know what our book departure time was, but I don't care. <laughs> We're going. So you can see, as we were told, we are on a 1 in 100, well, now a 1 in 250 gradient. So we are making our way downhill. We're making some good speed on that 100, that's for sure. Sixty is our speed limit still, sixty miles per hour. Our next stop is Kiliwan, which is uh, 1.8 miles away from us, from our present location. There are no signals anywhere on the route. You can see nothing ahead. So basically, if I wanted to, if we didn't care about the speed, we could just do this. But uh, I need to know where the station is, so we're going to keep it up. What is this train coming? That is the train we're to Dumfries Goods Service. So there is a distance signal telling us that we're good to go. It's signaling the signal at the station, which we also have to stop for because it's coming up. So... Let's not get cocky and challenge ourselves this time. Let's actually just try to come to a proper stop here, shall we? So I am just coasting right now. Applying a little bit of brakes here to make sure I at least have some speed reduction. It's not going to be a massive reduction yet. Okay, I'm dropping two miles for every six hundredths of a mile right now. Which seems like it's going to be too slow, so I'm taking some brakes off here. If I check the math on that later, I might find I would have been perfect. But you know what? Uh, again, we need to come in with some speed. We can't just crawl. Okay, we're now at the point that I'm certain I'm going to come in with some speed here. So we're going to keep reducing the speed as we get closer. I'm coming in very nicely for the stop, I think. I think I'm in really good shape right now. So I'm going to increase those brakes a fairly bit right now, a fair bit. Uh, 
Ah, uh, you know what? I should probably go forward just a little bit more, so I'm going to do that. Let's at least get all the coaches into the station if we can. So forward just a wee bit. Again, I don't have a timetable, so let's do it right. Since we have left a little brake pressure applied, that will slow me down in time. So we're just going to go a little bit beyond the station here. We're going to go ahead and let the brakes bring me back to a stop. Then we'll open the doors. So it looks like my first two stops might have been perfect. We actually do want to go beyond the platform so the coaches can all get in and all customers can access the platform without having to change cars. So looking at the back of the train, you can see that I'm barely in, but I'm going to go slightly further here. And that should do the job. So back facing the cab here, you can see that I'm hanging just off the platform, which is actually ideal. So doors will open here at Kiliwan. Book to depart 1617. So I'm a little bit late. Looks like these scenario timings might have been a little more uh, luxurious back in the rail simulator days. And I know this is the case with American trains as well because I've actually seen uh, a good example of an American scenario where the timings are no good at all uh, in the current version of the game. So it looks like things changed on some of the UK routes as well, even this one. So, uh, yeah, I may have to modify some timings if there is an actual timetable scenario later on on another of these scenarios. We shall see. It may be that the uh, scenario timings, as they were, are also set up to allow you a lot of slack uh, compared to what you would get on a regular timetable, where you have to be within a minute or two. Whistle! There's no short, short, long, short here, or long, long, short, long here. You just blow the whistle once and you cross. Personally, it's a lot less noisy for the neighbors, so I like it. You can see Kirk Gun, or er, sorry, Kirk Gunson. Kirk Gunson is coming up, so since I can see it coming up, I'm going to go ahead and idle the throttle. And uh, I'm going to put a very, very small brake application on just to start slowing down a little bit, but not too much yet. We're going to increase that. I want to get myself down under 20 as we get to the platform. I'm actually starting to realize I probably want to come in even slower than that, so I'm going to try to manage an even better slowdown as we go. Since I am on a slight downhill, I'm going to go ahead and increase my brake application right now. That will do. That's going to go ahead and start bringing some of my speed off very nicely here. I'm getting a drop of three miles of speed for every mile, every tenth of a mile I go right now. This might be a good pace, but the slower I get, the quicker the speed will come off. So I'm going to ease the brakes off just a wee bit here. I'm going to ease them off even more because now I'm realizing I'm coming in way too slow. So we're going to do a very gradual application of the brakes here now, which is going to remain set. By the time I reach the station at this point, I'm estimating we'd be going about 18, 19 miles per hour. So I'm going to hold this pace right now and see if I'm right on that. I'm actually probably wrong on that. Because again, the time that it takes for the speed to come off is going to be uh, increased. Or decreased, rather. And yeah, I'm not going to be down to 18 by that point. But I'm still going to enter the platform at a good 15 or so. And that's when I'm going to really want to put those brakes on. So I'll start applying those brakes just before we get fully into the station. 
Actually, my 15 is even a bad estimate. Look at this. I'm just going to put some regulator on to get to the station. Don't forget you can always reapply some regulator if you're coming in too slowly. And you don't have to adjust your brakes at all. You can keep them on so the brakes still have an effect. May not be, may or may not be normal for steam engines to do it that way, but you know, in a game environment, we can cheat on some of these trains. So if that is normal, hey, I'm a pro. And if it's not normal, well, I gave you a hack to get around it. So there you go. Kurt Gunzen is where we're pulling in right now. I am increasing my brake application at this time. This platform is big enough to get the entire train on if we so choose. And I'm parking the engine right by the stairs. So there we go. Arrival at Kurt Gunzen, platform one. Once again, I'm departing later than the game would like me to, but you know what? Like I said before, I think the uh, timings on the game are not as meanable as they were in the old days. So we're leaving at a speed limit of 50 miles per hour, but you saw the sign coming up saying we're going to go 60. In fact, that sign was earlier than it shows on the HUD. So I have a feeling we might have an early application of this 60 to our, our restriction here. Maybe not. There it is. And I, I did not have full regular apply. That was my fault. So we're going to keep going now. So yeah, work in the elections. I mentioned before that I'm going to be working an election uh, tomorrow as I'm recording this. Yesterday as you're seeing this. This is the fifth election I'm going to be uh, working, I believe. Um, I know I started doing them many years ago. And then after several years, I decided, you know what? I can make this a regular gig if I don't have a job at the time. So I can make this a regular gig. And uh, even if I do have a regular job, I still want to do this. Because it's extra money I can get that I won't be getting paid over time at the other job. so Because I can only do so many hours. And so... I still don't mind doing this as, as an extra gig here and there, um, even if I were to have another job. So this is the fifth time I've worked the election. The way these elections work is that you have to be there the entire day. You cannot leave. Uh, so I'm going to be getting up at 7 o'clock in the morning. I have to be there by 8. The polls open at 9. I have to close the polls 12 hours later at the other 9. Uh, because I'm supervising a polling place, I don't get to go home when everything's done. I have to go drive everything back to the polling place and uh, return a bunch of computers, a bunch of uh, paperwork, and uh, get, get some exercise for the day, get my workout for the day that I'm not going to get anywhere else. So there you go. So it might be 11 o'clock in the evening or later by the time I get home. I'm probably going to hop into bed and just zonk myself right out. That's the uh, kind of uh, thing I expect when I get home. I'm just going to be tired. I'm going to zonk myself right out. So I'm hopeful I can get a quick edit on this video done be as soon as I finish recording it so I don't have to worry about that. But odds are I'm probably going to push it and fall asleep in the chair and then realize, you know what, you're not going to have a good sleep going into election day. So what can you do? Actually, I'm going to keep a heavy break application. I need to get my speed down. So let's put a heavy brake application, get that speed down quite nice. I'm going to try and leave myself at about 10. So I have to lift, raise this back up. There we go. There we are. I'm sure there is a guideline for how much brakes you should apply to come to a stop at a certain amount of time. I have not mastered those numbers yet. I'm not going to profess to even intend to uh, master those numbers. I'm just trying to complete a service without any incidents. That is my objective. No incident service. Hence the speeding penalty earlier. So there, incident. So arriving at Southwick, stopping at platform one today. 
More brakes to come to a stop, please. There is a train coming by. That is the Northern Irishman. I did not want full brakes, so I'm going to try to throttle through this a little bit. It's not working like I planned. Okay, much better. So the train can come to a stop anytime now. We are good to go as we arrive at Southwick Platform 1. Book to leave at 18.25. Well, I'm late. Heading to Dalbini, which I believe is our last stop. Yeah, that is our last stop. So as long as we're not marked for being late, we're good. Whoops. Get that steam regulating correctly, and then we're good to go. So a quick peek at the map to see if there's anything beyond Dalbini. I don't know offhand if there is. So if we look at the railroad track beyond, you can see there is some track continuing. And there are some portals there. And uh, on this iteration of the route, it looks like you did not get all the way along. It looks like there is a platform that is going to be in this general area. Because there are some sidings here. One is connected to eventually come off. Uh, these appear to be sidings here as well. But this looks like an unfinished area at the time that this route was published. So uh, on the next version of the route, when we get to that version, we're probably going to find out what those sidings are named and what station is there, if there is one. But for right now, that area is not completed. That might be the Castle Douglas area. It might be a little further along. I'm not sure. So uh, Dalbini is 1.5 miles away. I'm going to go ahead and come in at high speed and hit the brakes. Why not? Seven tenths of a mile out, I'm going to start putting a heavy brake application on. I'm just going to do a light one right now so I have a running brake ready to go. Or we're on downhill. You know what? I will put some brakes on, on second thought. A 1 in 80 gradient. That is a strong gradient right there. So as promised, time for some brakes. Let's see where this takes me. They're going to ease those brakes off a little bit now because I don't want to lose too much speed yet. those old buildings down there nice I'm well under 40 so we're not gonna have a problem with our speed limit Just gradually bringing my speed down here because I don't want to uh, break limits as I come in or break past the platform I should say as I come in. Limit is easily satisfied. Now just in case, I didn't see a, a distance signal, but just in case there's a red signal beyond the platform, I don't want to risk uh, upsetting that signal. Looks like it is a green signal anyway. I'm coming in a little too slow so I'm putting the uh, Regular backup, so I have some control coming in. That'll do. 
a little more actually come off there we go You can see it looks like a shunt signal down there. So we have a shunt signal as well. Or maybe that's for the other track. In any case, we're going to get a, get our train uh, stopped right here. We're going to let these passengers on. That is the end of our service. Arrival at Dalbini Platform 1, train terminating. So that's the first of uh, many services that I have in uh, my collection for Port Road. A lot of... Uh, Scenarios on the UK train sim actually do use the uh, port road. There's even some uh, Scenario packs on there that utilize I think one has like 10 scenarios or something like that in it. Maybe 12. I don't know So I'm going to see if I can get a look at some of these uh, other scenarios as time goes on But those are for later versions of the port road the version I'm working with right now is the original version This is not the version that was on steam. We are gonna work our way up to that. So uh, well done You can head home on the next train Thank you so that's the end of that. Make sure you tune in next time for the other scenario. This other scenario is going to be using a class 37. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to put the Armstrong Powerhouse version in or use the default one. It is the Kuju model. I'm tempted to put the Armstrong Powerhouse one in, but I'm probably not going to only because it's probably too new looking for the area. I'm sure we can make it fit, but I'll go ahead and use the Kuju one for right now. For other scenarios, I might put the AP one in if I can make it look nice for the uh, old version of the route. In any case, I will see you next time for what I believe is a milk train that we're gonna be doing next time. I'll see you for the, uh, what I think that is. Either that or that's the next route. I'll see you for the next turn or whatever it is. Uh, I'm Cyclone, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'll go ahead and work my election and get this edited before I do that. And I will see, I'll be playing this turn in a couple days to have for you on Saturday. If it is up on the channel at the time that you're seeing this, it will be on in, on our playlist in three, two, one.